Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to have you here and we are in day three of VEDA. I wanted to spend just a little bit of time telling you a little bit about the background story of traditionally inspired meaningful art why this channel is here and hopefully it resonates with a lot of the things that you've seen previously or will be seeing throughout the rest of this month and of course for videos to come. So to tell you the story about Tima by FK, <laughs> I have to start a little bit a ways and I love storytelling. Growing up, I actually lived in Brooklyn, New York and it was absolutely a melting pot. So my name never really was the cause of much conversation. <laughs> it was Pop Mata and folks said, all right, that's what it is. And we moved on. When I moved when I was 10 to Maryland and I was in grade school, end of fifth grade, sixth grade, I, for the first time, was very conscious that my name was so different. And, you know, from like kids or teachers not being able to pronounce it correctly and being mocked and all of this sort of stuff. But what happened in that time period as well is that folks would look at my name sometimes and then just say Fatima and I was like it happened enough where I was like oh well Fatima's easier for you I know my name kind of is Fatima so let's go with that folks so I was Fatima from like sixth grade on throughout college um so some of my good friends would call me Tima as a nickname of Fatima all that to say Tima was um, you know, like a little nickname that really it stuck with me for my close friends who would call me that. So when I was thinking of what I wanted to call like my brand or my business, that sort of thing, I love a good acronym. <laughs> and I was like, Timo would be a fantastic acronym. And then I was like, what should it be an acronym of, right? And I landed on traditionally inspired, meaningful art because at that period of my artistic journey, when I was in my early 20s and just finishing up college, I was doing a lot of commission work for folks, whether it was wood burnings, I kind of fell into that in my late, in my early mid 20s, I was really passionate about wood burnings, I would do paintings and just various different things for folks. And I knew at heart that a lot of my work was really grounded in these rich traditions and were so inspiring to me. And oftentimes I would get commissioned to do works of art for folks who were celebrating big anniversaries, um, friends who wanted to gift something to their parents or newlyweds, etc. And they truly were meaningful works of art for myself in creating it because of how much I grew in completing each piece, but also for the individuals and for you know who it was that they were gifting the items to. And that so resonated with me. So I wanted traditionally inspired because a lot of my works were um, artwork like wood burning, which is very uh, you know traditional to my upbringing in West Africa. I saw a lot of wood burnings even in my you know parents' house here. But whenever I would go back home to visit, this real intricate um, wood burning design. So I knew that I wanted that to sort of be the name. Now, as far as the logo, that beautiful image that you see, that was something that actually I I think I sketched it out maybe in 2014. I'm gonna have to try and find the original sort of wood burning I did of it. I was sitting down one day after I had come up with this, you know, name and all of that, and I wanted a symbol that would really represent what it was that I felt like I was giving right to the world and the Sankofa bird is always something that I've gravitated to and I've been drawn to because of its rich meaning and it I will put sort of on the bottom of the screen what it means but it's essentially going back you know reaching back in your roots reaching back so that you can move forward, right? And when I thought about traditionally inspired, I am in some ways kind of looking back historically at all of the beauty of, you know, the generations that came before me, these artisans that had these really beautiful works of art and gave that to us, right, to enjoy and to learn from. And I was sort of carrying the the history of those art forms forward and putting my own stamp and twist on it, right? Bringing it into more contemporary settings 
and just giving it my own flavor. So I really felt like I wanted the Sankofa bird to be incorporated there. So I was just sketching and I was like, I'm sure I could get T-I-M-A to sort of look like a Sankofa bird somehow. And I did. So that's what it is. If you've ever looked and you're like, what, what is that? It's the Sankofa bird with the T and the feathers and the eye, the circle above the eye is the egg that the Sankofa bird is like reaching back to and then the M-A. So after I came up with the Sankofa bird design, that initial sort of sketch, my amazing little cousin was able to take that and then make it into something beautiful that I can actually use. So I'm always so appreciative of her and kind of taking that time to do that because it's been like my favorite branding thing <laughs> um, because it's just so beautiful and it encapsulates everything that I want. So that is the history behind traditionally inspired meaningful art and how it came to be. I also wanted to add that the reason why it didn't have like some catchy, punny, sewing related name is because this channel wasn't originally a sewing channel. <laughs> All of my original videos are still linked at the very bottom. So if you scroll and are curious about um, my 99 Names art series, which you'll learn more about next Sunday, I will um, tell you more about that and why I was passionate about that and we'll still continue it. But I was here genuinely to share all of my creative musings. So for me, sewing and fabric is just my current sort of medium, right? That I'm producing and getting to be creative with. But it is not in at all <laughs> the only art form or the only creative outlet that I have, far from it, I have many, um, but it is the one that sort of captivated me and has held me for the longest amount of time, I think, in big part because of you, because this really truly has felt like a community, being able to hear from you and seeing the interest and there is never, <laughs> you know, shortage of new things to do. And I just kind of hit the ground running with that and have loved it ever since. But I would love within these 30 days that we're spending together throughout the month of April to really introduce you to some of the other parts of my creative endeavors and what has really kept me going as a person who thinks of themselves as an artist. And I would love to share that with you. I've always sort of wrestled with this idea of whether or not I would share some of those other creative passions of mine here in this space as it has become quite concentrated on sewing and I didn't want to sort of mess that up as folks who understand the algorithms would say. I don't really know it as well um, but I do know that I'm a multifaceted person <laughs> with a ton of different interests and if you are here because you love creativity and that genuine spark to express yourself, um, then I feel it's only right that I kind of am able to share those other facets as well without sort of feeling bad or weird about it, right? So that is what you can expect moving forward and I look forward to sharing that with you soon.